Okay, we're on. Yes. And I wish greetings upon those of us, or those of you who will be watching us on YouTube. I am Reverend John Robert Gresham Jr., the pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church, and I welcome you to this Sunday School Lesson Review. This review is for the Sunday School Lesson based on February the 8th of the year 2009. Our unifying lesson tonight from the International Sunday School curriculum is Nathan Challenges David. Um, anybody got the adult lesson? Well, adult lesson topic, you have the youth topic? Yeah, ours is a scandal exposed. A scandal exposed is the youth topic. Thank you, Sister Polanco, for that. And this, of course, comes to us from 2 Samuel, the second chapter, I'm sorry, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and also verses 13 through 15, and as we prepare for the teaching of the lesson, we may want to go back and read the 11th chapter, as that will give us a background to the lesson itself and also verses the rest of verse 7 going into verse 12 as Nathan describes the particular um, sentence against David for the sins that he has committed. But beginning with the lesson that we have before us tonight, um, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and I want to begin with those first four verses and entitle that section, Call and Parable. Call and Parable. And it reads as follows from the, from the New Living Translation. So the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had brought. He raised that little lamb and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day a guest arrived at the home of the rich man, but instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. Um, not taking any way, anything away from Nathan at this point, because certainly um, we can talk about the courage that Nathan needed to confront the king of Israel. In fact, David is the king of Israel. Um, it, it takes a great amount of courage to criticize or even give a contrary opinion to what a king has on his mind. So Nathan does bear a good amount of courage in, in this parable, in, in the confronting of David with this parable. But I want to highlight something, and it says in the King James Version, and the Lord sent Nathan. And in the New Living Translation, so the Lord sent Nathan. In fact, any translation that you got the NIV, what does it say in the NIV, Sister Polanco? The Lord sent. The Lord sent Nathan. In other words, it's not like Nathan is relying on his own strength. It's not that Nathan is relying on his own wisdom. Yes, he does have some strength. Not taking that away from him. Yes, he does have some wisdom. Not going to take that away from him either. But it's the Lord that sent him. Nathan is reliant on the Lord. But do we always do what the Lord tells us? No, we don't always. Thank you for bringing that up, Deacon Bickens. We don't always do what the Lord tells us to do. And, and, and yeah, th this, this is why I'm not, I don't want to um, 
completely dismiss the courage that Nathan has. Because certainly he does have some courage. But where's the source of his courage coming from? Yeah. And, and that has to be a fact that we share with our students that our strength and our courage comes from God. We're not going to be able to stand up for what's right on our own two feet because our own two feet is going to cause us to run the other direction as fast as possible. You know, when we think of our own history, I mean, my goodness, what Martin Luther King Jr. graduated from Boston University School of Divinity, uh, could have had any pulpit he wanted from Boston to San Francisco. In fact, it was said that somebody from the West Coast even encouraged him to take up a pastoral position in San Francisco, California. But instead, he was sent by God. Not to San Francisco, not to New York or any other place, but Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. So if we are going to be a people of courage that will stand up on the word of God, we need to rely on God and on God to send us. Because if we try to do it any other way, it's certainly going to fail. Deacon, if you can hit the button, please. Mm -hmm.